Hey guys, um, it's Friday. Uh, I made a video last night, pretty late actually. It was like midnight, half twelve when I got in, and um, <clears throat> I don't know what happened. Something weird happened. Like I made the video, and for some reason it hadn't saved. My computer crashed like part way through, so I'm having to redo it. And I've only just figured out how to um, fix it so that this actually records. Um, this week, um, part of the rotor is to do with imagery. So we've been focusing on means and ways of engaging our creative spirit, our inner creativity, and even really kind of using those tools as a means of reducing the critical aspects, the, the critic inside of you. It's not uncommon for people with mental health problems, with eating disorders or what have you, to be incredibly driven and to be incredibly perfectionistic. Yeah, I said that right. There's so many words I can't say. And the, the idea of these videos, the set of videos, is, is for you to break through that, is for you to not look at your drawing that we talked about in the first week, painting whatever um, sketches and your writing and not taking that in a critical way and more uh, looking at it. <laughs> that type of thing is always subjective and it's easy to be critical of ourselves. So unlike taking a maths exam or what have you, the, the there is no right or wrong answer. The, the the answer is down to what you create. And there's always going to be art that some people love and other people don't. Um, there's writing that some people are going to like and other people don't. Um, and today the focus isn't so much on things that you could criticise yourself for, but on what's around you, on imagery. That That's kind of the topic. So it's looking at what you have around you or what you can surround yourself with and using that to let go, be in the moment. Some of you will, I can imagine a lot of people now have come across the term mindfulness or being in the moment, using your senses, what you can hear, what you can see, what you can feel, what... Um, how it makes your body feel to be in an environment and such. <clears throat> so what I was thinking today, I'm looking out of my window and it is pretty much sleeting. So <laughs> there's not much inspiration outside. But what I will often do where I'm sat is I surround myself in the things that are mine. Now I tried to do this last night and um, it didn't really work. So let me just unplug that for you. Okay, so this is still a work in progress, okay? So I have got a sitting area there, fashion magazines, okay? I've got Gabrielle, my typewriter. I've got a picture from New York. I've got some daffodils, which are now starting to die. I've got some artwork, which again, all subjective. Um, all my notebooks, look how messy I am. And is this... And over here, I have got my incense, my water fountain, my candles. My little putty cat's over there, fast asleep. Okay, so let me just pop that down. So it's been about creating an environment for myself that I find inspirational, that I find allows me to work, allows me to look at things, taking the smell of the flowers that, when they weren't dying, um, and just things that remind me of, of, of good things and make me feel comfortable, make me feel at home. I mean, I've hung this over the chair. I could not even tell you when I got this. It is a bazillion years old. How cute is it? Oh, and look how apt given it's Valentine's Day. And it's got hope puree. I don't, I don't even think you can even buy that anymore. And... It's just memories and it's positivity. Now, I did some work with the girls in the group I facilitate last week and something we spoke about was if the space, obviously I understand that it's difficult if people don't have that um, 
have that choice in terms of making a space for yourself but one of the girls was saying she's got you know this room at home that got you know sofas in there and a big television but it's not really used so I was kind of like well why don't you bring some of your stuff into it I've ordered some throws and I'm waiting on them waiting for a lampshade and um, my stand here some throws get some candles the smells that you like the smells that are uplifting I love the smell of rose I love having rose candles um, I love the smell of certain incense um, I love to have books around me because books for some bizarre reason make me feel safe flowers always make my mood feel better the light although it's grey outside always lifts me look at my little typewriter and it, it just makes me feel happy constantly and I think that that is what this video for me is about is for you creating that space for yourself now my bedroom is covered um it really needs redecorating and i don't think that's going to happen anytime soon it's just covered in post-it notes some of them i mean i've got letters from um cards from my friend ellen who took her life in 2008 you're talking like six years ago I've still got those up. I've still got post-it notes that my friends have sent me from years ago. And it's it's more a subliminal thing. I don't wake up and look at them and read them like, oh, I'm so amazing, I'm so brilliant. What it is doing is that when I wake up, those things are just around me, you know? There's, there's memories of things and there's photos from my past that make me happy, um, trips away, uh, photographs that I've actually had and sold myself when I was doing photography I normally try to have flowers in my room I've got all my beautiful china oh my china my china and that's the imagery side of things outside of that and um, I was thinking about getting out of the house so I was thinking of um, going to galleries if you, if you feel that you're able to do that I was fortunate enough to see some amazing work when I was in Singapore some of it can be calming some of it can be interacting so I've got two contrasting things here right so when I was in Singapore one of the pieces was this woman I can't forget what her name is she's quite well known she had um, a massive space and it was pebbles that were school shaped and you could walk and you have to take your shoes off and there was her artwork around and it was all about being in that environment <clears throat> you know and I sat down and she asked you to pick them up to to feel the pebbles to put the pebbles on your skin I took pictures of it you were allowed to take pictures so that's one way of it's very soothing engaging and and all I was thinking about in that moment was her work and what I was taking from that and my understanding my interpretation of what she was doing and then you've got the absolute extreme of being in like New York and F.O. Swartz, which is just hectic and chaotic and going on the big keyboard, you know, like in the movie Big. And if you haven't seen Big, you need to go and watch it. It's years old, but, you know, running up and down with like music and piano lights playing up and laughter and being with your best friends and hugging them and having touch and having so, so much around you that just just inspires you and makes you so happy so that's another means of doing things and that you know go, going to the cinema and seeing movies uh, on the big screen can be like a wonderful experience I appreciate that those sorts of things aren't for everybody um, engaging in some sort of if you want to I never do any exercise so I'm not really one to talk but physical activity so ice skating or something I went to roller arm which is like rollerblading with the kids not that long ago just that take you outside of yourself you know our minds even like everyday people you don't have to have mental health problems to need to have to time have time out tracy took me to a spa i sound so spoiled talking don't i <laughs> tracy took me to a spa and all it was about was the oils the massage the smell the relaxation and of course being with her we stayed overnight and just having time and just appreciating the food that you're eating your environment it's beautiful it isn't hardly it's just lovely and it's engaging but it's distant it's oh it's it's taking you from like just chaos and you allowing you to, to just be and that just being can be laughing drinking and playing drinking games and being complete idiots or it can be a soothing thing that you do yourself something i used to do after therapy was go I used to, the, when Borders used to exist, which doesn't, there was a, 
Starbucks upstairs and you could take the books up and I used to go and spend a couple of hours and it was just about being in that moment, it was about reading the book, it was about um, maybe jotting down some writing of the people around me, um, drinking my coffee and just appreciating being in that moment. Some other means of imagery and, and reflect, sort of reflecting on, on the self and trying not to be overcritical with yourself is photography, for example, taking pictures of the things that catch your eye. Who cares whether it's a good photo or not? Some people might like it, some people might love it. My photo style is completely different to the next person's photo style. I see things that other people might not see they see different things that I don't see. For example, my brother does love to take pictures, you know, and when we've been away together, we could be looking in the same direction but see something completely different and our picture, if we compare them when we get back, we've been on the same trip, had the same experience but have completely different pictures. And I think that that's something, in terms of using your imagination and using what's around you, that, that I find that quite fascinating. So then you could use those pictures, put together a scrapbook. Um, I was thinking about being on Tumblr, looking at some of your favourite quotes, and it's just engaging yourself in pictures and what you can see around you. Um, and I know imagery is to do with what you see, but it's also about what you're feeling. It's about if you look at a picture, what story does that tell you? What do you think the artist was feeling? What do you think the artist was trying to tell you? What do you feel that you've taken from it? Um, and you see all these things inspire one another. So you could look at a piece of artwork and it could inspire a piece of writing. That piece of writing could inspire you to draw something. So fashion, for example, you could look at a dress that a certain designer is using and maybe their catwalk shows it's been New York Fashion Week and write about that you can tell stories you use that imagination that you've got from what is around you i'm going to call this now because i've got some work to do what i do want to finish with is that after months of hard work and doing it all myself i am going to be publishing wanderlust which is which is my first poetry anthology. It is, all going, fingers crossed, the 22nd of this month, the Saturday, and I'm going to be having a kind of launch party at home. I'm going to be having some of my closest friends. And Wanderlust will be available via Amazon. It's going to be available via sort of Amazon.com, so in the States. It's going to be .co.uk. It's going to be available in Europe. Um, across the world um, it's also if they choose to take it on being offered out to um, academic institutions um, libraries uh, bookstores uh, that's the kind of secondary thing really I'm kind of mainly focusing on the Amazon thing so I've got my own page on Facebook which is going really well and just put in see a Jane words and you should be able to find it I also had a tattoo done, I didn't tell anybody, so I have Wanderlust. Will it be backwards to you? Hang on. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, um, Wanderlust there. So that's to kind of, that's mine, you know, I'm a little heart just because I wanted that for ages. But that's really significant to me and um, yeah, so... If you feel you would like to, and grab yourself a copy from Amazon from the 22nd. And yeah, CJ Lloyd, Wanderlust, um, she travels her own mind. And I will see you next week. And I love you loads. Okay, bye, bye.